Chelsea clocks. They're like regular clocks, except they're handmade. They don't take batteries and they're fancy. And even though the world's finest minds have grappled for over 400 years with the mechanics of time, it took the home factory team less than seven minutes to master the mechanics of clocks. So without further ado, set your watches. Okay, this is Chelsea Clocks, 24,000 square foot manufacturing facility in Chelsea, Massachusetts. And we are go. Meet JK Nicholas, CEO of Chelsea Clock. And go figure, JK is a pretty time focused guy. One, two, three, four, five. But being surrounded by clocks all day does have certain setbacks. Chelsea Clock was founded uh, just around uh, 1897. I think it was in a garage for a few years before that, but that's when it was incorporated. We got a bell in there, right? So we just do it over. Um, how many others are going to go off in the next three minutes? Because once we're through this, we, it's not going to go another half hour. Hold on, it's just, there's, yes. there we go. I knew it was common, so why? OK, so with time being at a bit of a premium, I'm thinking we focus on four main things. The brass case, the gears, the dial, and the assembly. Agreed. Clock making begins here with Bob. My name's Bob Eaton. Bob is making the ship's bell clock, so called because they were designed for use by sailors. It rings every half hour, because when the sailors are on the ship, they know when they were going off duty. So first, the case. This computerized machine spins a pre-made brass cylinder, smoothing and sanding it to get it down to an 18-centimeter diameter at a depth of 10 centimeters. And then it's drilled with holes to make it easier to hang in your home. And voila, the brass case is complete. The case is then sent here for cleaning. We're gonna clean your clock. How was that? Ah, perfect, Bob. Yep, his name is Bob too, which is confusing for us, but not for Bob. Bob, Bob, and Bob. Bob buffs the brass using this wheel, then soaks it in an ultrasonic bath. That is a tank of liquid flooded with high-frequency sound waves, which create a scrubbing brush action within the fluid. So it thoroughly cleans the brass and removes any imperfections. And meanwhile, back to Bob. The clock's smaller components are created on these machines overseen by Bob, would be the first Bob. Automatic screw machines they were built maybe 80 years ago, and they still went pretty good for their age. I hope I want that good at 80. Each clock is made up of 365 parts. You know, they're made in many ways the way they have been from, for, you know, the company's uh, history. Machines that, you know, date back to World War II sometimes. That's pretty amazing, too. Yeah, but with our own clock ticking away, we thought we'd home in on the gears. The more gears you have, the longer the clock can go without being wound. So Bob is making 18 gears for the ship's bell using this popping machine. Chelsea Clock prefers to cut gears, which allows for better accuracy in the finished clock. Keep the time. Perfect time. So with the case made and the gears cut, it's time to put on a good face. That's done by Dennis, not Bob. I like a pretty face. I'm a sucker <laughs> for a pretty face. First, he smooths the face using this potter's wheel, then applies a special silvering compound. Perfect. Nothing is perfect, as we all know, but it's close to perfect as we can get. Sorry. Almost perfect. The clock is now ready to be assembled, so the dial together with gears and the remaining 363 parts that we didn't have time to make are sent to be balanced and calibrated by Jeannie. Action. Jeannie's the master clockmaker and has worked here for 52 years. I think by now I have the hang of it. It's Jeannie's job to put the entire clock together, which takes about an hour per clock? About an hour. Really, Jeannie? Yes. Half hour. OK, but the million dollar question here is, which clock does Jeannie have at home? The most expensive one. <laughs> yeah, I bet that's a nice clock. Uh, just of course, it runs well because I'm there. <laughs> Balanced calibrated clocks head back downstairs to Humberto, who fixes them into their shiny brass casings and adds a gong. Then, Umberto tests the accuracy by moving the hands in half-hour increments and listening to the chimes. Further testing occurs for the next seven days to make sure that each clock is absolutely perfect before it leaves the factory. 
They have to be perfect. These clocks have been bought by rock royalty. Elvis Presley, known to buy some clocks. The Grateful Dead actually purchased a bunch of clocks from us, and I'm not sure for what purpose that was. And just royalty. President Obama has purchased our clocks. His wife, Michelle, selected our product to bring to Europe on his first trip overseas. That's a world-class client list. So what's it like working on a world-class clock? It's a knot. It's a craft. And you complete the clock. You know you did something great, especially when it works good. It usually does. OK, we're out of time, guys. Let's pack this clock up and get it out the door. These things need to be seen. Yeah, these things also need to be wound. Hey, careful with that clock, lady. This one's handmade by Jeannie. That's right. And there it goes, back on the mantelpiece. Phew.